Did you just finish your study in Canada and wants to apply for post graduation work permit but you are not sure about the process, fees, documents and timeline? Then this video is for you because in today's video I am going to share my laptop screen and explain you step by step everything that you need to know in order to apply for your PGWP. So without wasting any further time, let's get started with this video. The first thing that you need to do is login into your GC account. So you will go to that normal website that you use in order to log in into your GCK account. Once you have logged in into your account, you have to scroll down at the bottom of the list and select this option apply to come to Canada. You don't have any personal reference code. So you have to scroll down and select this option of work permit. Then you have to answer this few questions that are on the screen. Then you have to click on next. Are you lawful permanent residents of United States? No. What is your current immigration status in Canada? So you are on your study permit right now. So you have to select student. Do you plan to work on campus? Let's say no. You have finished your study. So you are not a full time student anymore. So you will select no. You have recently graduated from a institute. Let's say yes. And your course will be like of course more than eight months. Is your work an essential part of your studies? So if like you have no co-op or anything in your program, let's select no. Have you been told by immigration and you are approved in principle of PR? You haven't been approved for PR anytime, so let's select no. Have you submitted a PR application in Canada? Select no. Do you have a written job offer? So let's select no. If you have a written job offer, you can select yes. But we are applying for an open work permit, so you can work for any employer under PGWP, so you can select no as well. You have an official letter from your school that confirms you have completed this study program as well as the copy of your final transcript. Select yes, because you have finished that program. So you should have at least a transcript and a completion letter in order to apply for PGWP. To make this process easier, let's select uh, never married or single. What is your province or territory? Let's say Ontario. And then it will give you this two option temporary resident visa and post graduation work permit in Canada. So we are doing this one right now, but uh, after you will get your work permit on hand, you will of course need to extend your visa temporary resident visa. You can check out this video after applying for PGWP, which will explain you how you can apply for TRV. We'll continue with this PGWP for this video and then continue. Do you have an official letter from your school that confirms that you have completed? Yes. Have you had a medical exam performed by RCC within the last 12 months? So let's say no. And then it will ask you that if you are planning to work under this category of jobs, let's select no. It will ask you almost the same thing again. Let's say no. If you are planning to work in like medical field, then you might require a medical exam. Do you want to submit an application for a family member? Let's say no. Are you giving someone access to your application? No. In the past 10 years, have you given your fingerprints and biometrics? Yes. At the time when you applied for Canadian student visa, you must have done your biometrics. There are fees associated with that application. Yes, I will be paying my fees. Are you able to make the digital copy of documents? Yes. Are you paying? Yes. And then you can verify all of the details that you have entered in previous questions. And if they all are good, then hit on continue. And then continue again. And here it will generate this application form where you have to fill out the main application form which is required in order to apply for PGWP IMM 5710. I will explain it later on. And then the four main documents that you will require for your PGWP is the recent education transcript. So if you have done two year program, then you will need the transcript for only that one course. But if you have done one plus one, then you will need the transcript, official transcript for both the programs. Uh, there is always a confusion that whether you can apply if you don't have an official transcript from your college or universities but just to make it simple for them in order to process your file i will always recommend you to wait until you get an official transcript the second document that you will need is competition letter for 
whatever programs you have done in. The third thing will be passport first and last page and digital photo. Of course, you will have a digital copy for your passport and you must have a digital photo that you have used at the time when you were filing for your student visa. So you can use the two here. And then if you scroll down below, it's asking you for this optional documents. The first uh, thing is needed if you are applying from outside Canada for PGWP, but if you are in Canada applying for it, you don't need it. And then here you can submit any additional information that you think that they might find it useful while they are processing your application. If you have studied two one year of course, then it is always recommended to upload uh, SOP kind of document which explains that what both programs you have done, what was the start date of first program, what was the start date of second program and you are expecting three years of work permit after finishing that two years of study. You can mention that thing here. Then if you scroll down below, the total fees for your PGWP will be 255 Canadian dollar. So now let's go back to the main form that you need to fill. So we'll open the link here. And in order to open this form, you have to save it somewhere on your desktop. And using the free version of Adobe Acrobat, you can open that form. So I will quickly go through what are the main important details that you need to fill in this, this form. I'll just click on validate first. So that way I will know what are the all mandatory fields. Here you can mention your UCI number, which is mentioned in on the top right side corner of your study permit. I want service in let's say English. I'm applying for, so you have to select this apply for a work permit for the first time or with a new employer. Then here you have to enter your first and given name based on your passport. If you use any other name, so let's select no. Here you have to select your gender, date of birth, place of birth, citizenship, and current country, you have to select status here. So you are student at the time of applying your work permit and your study permit is still valid. So you will put that dates here. And then based on your previous his traveling history, you have to select and fill in this information on number eight. On nine, your current marital status, Just say single to make it easier here. And then if you scroll down below, it's asking for your personal details. Have you previously been married? Let's say no. And then here you have to select your native language. Here you can select English or French. Have you taken a test from a designated testing agency? Let's say yes, because you might have done ILTS when you applied for your Canadian student visa, passport number, country of issue, issue date and expiry, very simple. For this trip, will you be using a password issued by Ministry of Health? Let's say no and no in this too. And then here is asking for your national identity document. So if you have your Aadhaar card then or PAN card or anything or driving license even, then you can select yes and enter that info, but it's not mandatory. So you can select no and skip that part. USPR card, let's say no. Here you have to fill out your current mailing address where you want the physical paper of your work permit to be delivered. So apartment number, street number, street name, city, province, postal code. And then here you have to enter your phone number. Here you can mention any other phone number if you have. You can skip the fax number part. You have to mention your email address. Coming into Canada. Here they are asking date and place of your original entry to Canada. So you have to mention the date when you firstly landed in Canada and you have to mention the airport's name here. For an example, if you landed at Toronto airport, then you can mention it here. The original purpose for coming to Canada, you can select study because you came on student visa, date and place of your most recent entry to Canada. So if you have been outside of Canada within the time frame for your study permit and you have come back, then you will have another stamp on your passport. So you can mention that date, but if you haven't left the Canada, then it will be the same as above. And if applicable, provide the document number of most recent visitor record, study permit, work permit, or temporary resident permit issued to you. So you can mention the latest study permit UCI number here. So suppose you have extended your study permit and you, you will have two study permit in that case. So you have to mention the latest study permit UCI number in this column. Details of intended work in Canada. What type of work permit are you applying for? So here you have to carefully choose the option for post-graduation work permit. So question two to seven, you can skip them all because it's not mandatory. Have you been issued a certificate under the PMP? Let's say no. 
education have you had any post secondary education if you answered yes give full details of your highest level of post secondary education so you can select yes and enter the highest level of post secondary education here employment give details of your employment for the past 10 years including if you have held any government position so you have to enter the, your latest employment information here and then the oldest one at the bottom if you haven't worked anywhere then you can just say na or unemployed and select the 10 years of duration from today's date to the past then if you go below background information within the past two years when just select no do you have any physical mental disorder no if you remain beyond the validity no have you ever been refused a visa or permit deny entry or order to leave so if you have got a refusal in the past when you applied for student visas and you have to select yes and then here you have to mention that info here that you applied first time and you got rejection and after applying for it again you got approval have you previously applied to enter or remain in Canada? You have to select yes as well. Have you ever committed, been arrested? Let's say no. Did you serve in military? No. Have you ever been a member? No. Majority of the time it will be no, but you can select accordingly. Then you have to do your signature here digitally and enter the date when you are filling out this form. And here do you continue to be contacted by RRCC then you have to select yes and then you can click on this validate button just to make sure that you have filled all the necessary information once you have filled out this form you just have to save it on your desktop somewhere and upload it so that's everything for today's video and I will see you guys in the next vlog